Hi everybody, here is Christian and this is Pico 8 Hero. This is um, Breakout. Um, right. So today is going to be an interesting, interesting thing. We're going to do the levels. And so the last time around, we, I already uh, hinted that there, this is kind of like a multi-step kind of thing. So um, just to clarify, so in um, Arkanoid, and I think also in um, mm, Alloway on Game Boy, there's this thing where you clear a stage, when you delete all the bricks, uh, it will start a new stage and there will be different patterns of bricks. And I think in Arkanoid you could actually play through all the way through, like there was like a lot of patterns and uh, you know, would start start with a sim simple wall like in Breakout, but later on you would get a very complicated wall patterns with different bricks and stuff like that. And so we want to do the same perhaps, we want to also um, also add this kind of... This kind of um, um, yeah, well, uh, well, this kind of content. We want to we want to uh, people not just to play through one stage, but maybe we want to give them multiple stages. Let's say we want to have the ten stages in the game. That seems like a lot of gameplay because it takes it takes quite a while to to finish one stage. Okay, so what we what can we do to do this? Well, there is multiple ways to do this. There is multiple ways to skin a cat, as they say. Um, um, so if you have any suggestions on how to do this yourself, uh, let me know. Uh, but I'm going to show you something that I, I think might work well for us. So one thing that, that you can, of course, do at, at first is like draw the stages on here. So there's like a map editor and you can draw things with uh, with sprites. You know, when you have sprites here and you can... Oh, actually, I didn't draw the sprite for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, if you create like a sprite... That's a sprite here and then you can put the sprite in here and you can draw stages out like this. Uh, but the problem, of course, here is that our bricks are not sprites. We could turn our bricks into sprites. Might be actually a good idea. Um, but I want to um, to show you a different way because I think we can. Um, it it fits a slightly different approach here. Is it might be it might be worthwhile. Okay, so there is this thing called I programmed a chess AI or I started programming chess AI. And there is something in chess that is called the Forzenth Edward notation. And Forzenth Edwards notation, just uh, abbreviated F-E-N. It's basically a string of characters that encodes a certain board position in chess. So, you know, if there's, for example, like some kind of interesting chess puzzle, uh, you can encode it in a, just a string of characters. And then people can use it in a PC, for example, in a program, can load up the string of characters and they will have the same board position. And I'm going to show you how this looks. This is basically something like this. This is a, this is a FEN of a, of a chess position. This in specific is the starting chess position. And you can see it basically goes through the entire chess board from top left, like you, and to the uh, bottom right, line by line, just going straight through. And, you know, different letters correspond to different chess pieces. So it's like R is a rook, N is a knight, B is a bishop, Q is a queen, uh, and so forth. P are pawns. So this is the second draw. You can see in between there are slashes. A slash is kind of like a line break kind of character. Technically not really necessary because you kind of notice when whenever a line is filled that you have to go to the next line. But, you know, there, there it is. There is a line break character. And there's also a number indicating empty spaces. And it, this means there's eight empty spaces. And so when you get like this kind of thing, and then here are some like details, you know, casting and stuff like that. So when you parse this kind of string, you can recreate a board position. So I think for this game, we can do the similar thing. We can also just recreate board positions or um, levels using a string of characters. I think that would be nice. So we kind of have to create our own um, our own uh, notation. So I'm going to start out uh, on the top here, maybe in the inside the init function, and I'm going to invent some kind of um, some kind of um, board position. How about how about B for block, just regular block B B B B B B. Uh, so we know that there's 11 Bs, uh, and I know that we're going to repeat blocks a lot. So how about we're going to go, the notation is going to be, uh, if there is a number, it will repeat the block that many times. There is a bit of a problem in that we might have multiple numbers. Um, but we can go like 6, B6. So let's just start like this. You know what? No, let's, let's just go, go B, 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 like 4 Bs. 
just like that four bees and then we're going to see what's happened then we're going to add more 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 features to this as we go right so th this means our build um, build bricks function has to be more complex it has to accept perhaps a string so we can say oh build now this string of blocks so we're going to go ldl for level right so now we have uh, we have kind of have to check each of the character of those of those um of the string right how are we going to do this how are we going to do this difficult right but is it di really difficult think about this a little bit there is a function called sub which i think we're going to use i'm going to show you uh, i'm going to copy this from the pico 8 week here and i'm going to explain to you how this works it's really nice sub there we go so it accepts three variables let's go like this it accepts three variables a string of characters a start which is a which is a number and an ending and it outputs a substring of that character of that string so for example uh, here here's an example which i think is, is really nice if you go if you go sub hello there from the string hello there and you type in one and five which means it starts here and it and the ending is here at the fifth character one two three four five so this here the sub will print and the print in, in total will print just the hello here it will just print the hello and if you want to um, print there we would need to type in seven as a starting character one two three four four five six seven and then eight nine ten eleven as a as an ending character seven eleven that would out output there so that's how sub works and we're going to use sub to iterate just the way we iterate for example through our bricks array here uh, we're going to iterate in the same way through our um, through our string array so instead of doing this here for 1 to 66 where 66 is just a random number that's, that we came up with we're going to iterate through a string we're going to change things a little bit um, how do you get a length of the string the same way you get a number of entries in a table that we had previously so you're going to go one hashtag um, lvl is our string in this case lvl so now it will iterate the the loop will loop once for every character in the level okay and then we can go local chr for character chr equals sub lvl our level the starting is going to be at i and the ending is going to be also at i so it will just get one character at the position i okay and then now we're going to check what that character actually is so we're going to go like if chr equals double equals very important it's an if statement so we have to go do double equals b then and then we're going to add this kind of stuff end easy peasy for breezy easy peasy for breezy and so now oh we have to remove this stuff because this was just a a test good so now we just make, want to make sure that build bricks also uh, launches with our level and let's see if this works huh we have six bricks indeed oh look it's so much easier to set up the combo now <laughs> okay so that's good that's not bad how can we upgrade this a little bit so i like the fact that in the the farnsworth notation if you have a slash um it kind of like means uh it's a line break so that's cool how about we do that how about we try to do this and so i want to have two lines of six bricks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So how are we going to do this? If character B is less something else, if character equals slash. So you think, you, you know, you aren't really, you can manipulate the I variable to make the loop go, to change the way the loop is executed. Huh. So you can go like I equals, so now we're going to try to set the I to the beginning of the next line, whatever line it is currently at. So we're going to go I equals um, FLR I minus one divided by 11. That's, that's, the, that's the thing that we had here to calculate basically the Y position. Um, actually, yeah, no, this is, this is correct. Is it? It, it, it is correct. Yes, it is correct. Let's try this. Um, I'm going to set the parentheses correctly here because they're not correctly set. And then we multiply it by 11 again. So we divide it, floor it and multiply it. Oh, yeah. And of course, we need to add one to it. So we figure out which line we are at currently. For line zero, one, whatever then we add one to it and then we multiply it back with 11 and so this should reset this at the next line not sure if this works but i have a big good feeling oh there's an equal sign ah see see me being silly again see me forgetting this equal sign again it did not work it did not work um, <clears throat> so the problem it might be experiencing here. All right. Hmm. So the problem is now, of course, the location of the brick that we're talking about is now inherently linked to the location of the substring that we're reading now. So if we change the I, obviously this won't work because the I means also that we would be reading different types of string in our string and stuff like that. So we need to like kind of the location that we're talking about, the I, that we're using to set the bricks has to be disassociated with the, the, the number of the character that we're leading from the string. Not a big deal. We're just going to introduce another J, another variable J. We're going to start J equals zero at the beginning. And then we're going to go J equals J plus one. Actually, uh, we can plus plus equals one then. So at the beginning, J will just mirror I for a while, unless we're gonna get to, to some more convenient stuff. And then of course here, we're gonna type in J when we calculate the position where the, the brick is placed. And so now here I can go J equals J minus one and stuff like that. Let's try this. Maybe this will work. Ha. Worked. And I can I have my perfect chain chain test now. <laughs> cool. So let me try to deal with this a little bit more. Let me add another B here. Perfect. Good. So I don't like this verbose way in which this is spelled out. So now I wanted to add this one last thing where we can just add a number and we'll just repeat the last brick that many times. How are we going to do this? So this is seven bricks now. We can just go like six here and six here. So this means this brick and then six more of those. It will just repeat whatever came last six times. So we're going to go here else if um, chr is equals or is greater than zero and chr 
is so you can do this equal is greater i forgot to, to mention this equals greater uh i think it might be this because the equal sign always comes last greater equals and chr is smaller equals <clears throat> nine it's kind of a weird spelling right because we are doing math but we are comparing with a string uh, but from what i understand this is how lua deals with characters I saw this this before. Uh, this is how Lua not deals with characters, but how Lua deals with uh, strings. And very important to add an end here. So let's hope this works. Um, I'm not sure if this works. So just in case, I will use our debug function. Do we have debug in here? Did we introduce a debug? Let me look real quick. Um, so looking, how do you find? Uh, um, Control F. D. Um, nope, we don't have a debug. So it's a good idea once your program gets a bit complicated to to create like a debug variable. Debug equals and, and you're gonna set it to nil. This gonna not gonna or or like just two um, quotation marks. So it's empty right now. And then somewhere where there's space. For example, that, all the way, oops, I have two mouse here. <laughs> all the way down here, where we're printing the score. We're gonna, usually you're gonna print the score, but if debug is not equal, uh, yeah, e it's not equal, exclamation point equal means not equal. Uh, then we're gonna go um, equal uh, parentheses, uh, then, not parentheses, <laughs> quotation marks. Otherwise, we're gonna print um, the regular score and everything. Um, so uh, Peter Pan is in the chat. How Peter Pan? How how did the tournament? Oh no, it's it's, it's the tournament is tomorrow, right? Um, so Peter Pan is asked which language is this is Lua. So if debug is set to anything at all, um, we're gonna just print debug. So that way we can monitor certain things. If we ever feel the need to monitor something, we can just set debug to something and it will print debug on, on the top of the screen for us. And so now when we do um, build bricks, uh, if we find something between, the, this should return nine at the end because, it will, oh, actually six. Um, so we're gonna go debug equals chr. This should put the six that we find in our string now. It should put that six in um, in debug and should put it on the top of the screen. Let's try this. There's nothing. <laughs> this is hmm. awkward. So why didn't this work? Hmm. Hmm, hmm. Why didn't this work? Can we try? Can we try like something like this? Maybe this will work. Maybe this will work. On the other hand, what? Ah, okay. So it has to be. So on the other hand, it did put something in debug. That's some. That's that's something that that confuses me, because we're not printing anything there anymore. Or maybe we put the, we printed the B debug in the wrong way. Let me let me check this. Maybe there is something in debug. We it's just the printing of the debug was was buggy. Let me see real quick. Draw game. There we go. There we go. The debug. Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe we have to specify exactly where we need to print this. I think this was the problem. There we go. There is a six that we were looking for. Hey, our code Jong02, how are you doing? And guy, good guyness is also in here. The font is beautiful. Don't you, don't you, don't you uh, hate on the font? Okay, so we are reading the number now in, into, into CHR. That's great. That's great. So now I want to create a little, little loop that loops uh, through a character. By the way, I need to probably create a local variable that goes last. 
Uh, this is going to be our the last brick that we printed. Last equals B, like this. And then we're going to get add a little little loop in here. So probably we're going to need another variable here. Let's go with O um, with O. And then we're going to go, we're going to create like this little loop here. Uh, no, actually this little loop. For i equals 1, 2, chr um, plus 0. We can go chr plus 0, so the chr gets converted to a... Oh, that's not going to be i, that's going to be o. Uh, gets converted to a... Um, to a to a number and then end at the beginning here and here i mean right now we are only brick a brick type is b so we're gonna go um later on we probably get gonna get the um, the function that puts bricks on a on a on in a, in a space that's probably going to be a separate function so right now i can just put it in here we actually don't need uh, we're gonna make make sure though that our last uh, brick was B. If um, a last equals B, then uh, end, and then here I want to advance J plus equals zero, uh, plus equals one. So when we find a number, to reiterate, when we find a number, we save that number, print the number on the screen, then we start a loop that loops, loops through, I guess we need at least one. So that, that loops as many times as we have the number and puts a brick in, in a spot that many times and uh, advances the J that many times. Let me, try this okay so this worked this is exactly what we we're looking for so let me see if we can get if you can get like 10 in here so we can let's see if we can fill the screen here right now so like this um so this didn't quite work. Oh, because 10 doesn't work. Obviously, 10 doesn't work. Uh, why doesn't 10 work? Well, because because it reads just one character. So 10 wouldn't be able to work. Well, it's kind of still odd that it, it's... Oh, it, it makes sense that it shows two characters then because it shows... It prints the B and then prints another B. It prints another one. So let me put a 6 in here. Uh, a 9, I mean. 9 is the maximum number we can repeat, I think. Let's try something like this. Ha. Huh. Um, it's kind of odd. I find it kind of odd. Don't quite understand why. Uh, it jumps to the... It, it skips always um, a line. That's something that confuses me right now. Bit weird. Oh, I know why. I know why. Because on... Um, hmm. So we have to deal with this a little bit right now. Let's see. So I think at the end of the loop, we have to subscribe, subtract, subtract one J. So J minus equals one. So this will work now. Yeah. Because see on, on the loop, at the end of the loop, we add one to J to be prepared for the next loop. Um, but that means that the last time we loop, loop through, we'd add another, uh, another, um, number to j and then the big loop ends and then we add another j so uh, by subtracting one j we're, we're back in sync oh this is so beautiful oh i love this so much <laughs> i really like the combo all right and so um x i wanted to add something new which we don't have right now is which is empty spaces I want to be able to be like, okay, um, an, an empty space. An empty space, we're going to mark with an X. 
I think X is, is a good is a good number for a, for an empty space. So let me look where, where this is. There we go. So we're gonna go if chr else if uh, else if chr equals equals x, which is an empty space. Then I'm just gonna go last equals uh, x. I'm not gonna add any brick now. We don't need to add any brick now. And then here, when we repeat the last one, we also have to check for this. So uh, else if last equals equals x, then and then nothing here. Again, I think this part, this function here, that's going to be probably turned like a sub function, place brick. But that's something we're going to use. And we have another, we have a full line of nothing in here. Oh, this is so 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 satisfying. <laughs> but we can already see how we can with level design we can encourage certain gameplay. Let me see. Ah. Okay. So um, let's do some more testing of the of the of the level here. So um, I want to maybe have like a re um, repeating pattern: bx, 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 bx. Is how many bx's do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I just think this should be a line for bx's. And I'll do another b. Oh yeah, that's good. So if we repeat this. Because as you can see, it automatically goes into the next line as well. So yeah, we can have something like this. And you can see how the collisions are really nice right now. And I think this is our extra effort that we put in this one crazy math function. All right, I'm gonna get, getting getting addicted uh, from this game. Um, right, so we can save levels like this now. Good, very good. So generating lever and patterns, or at least, I guess that's that's what I meant. Generating lever and patterns. Maybe that wasn't the, the best way to to um, describe it. Good. So on the next episode, we're gonna actually deal with a function that checks if the stage has been cleared and then loads the next levels and so on and so forth so we can like play through the entire game or at least we have multiple levels and we can skip from one level to another but that's something that comes on next episode see you next time around guys bye bye